Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Welcome replay viewers. You always have to say that. Welcome to the North Shore of Boston this beautiful morning. Look at the clouds today. How's the video and audio? Do we have good sound? Good morning, Tilly. How's the sound? How's the video and the audio? That's great. Thank you so much. I posted a couple of beautiful photographs this morning on uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram with this beautiful cloud formations. They're just amazing today. Good morning, Diana. Good morning, Lena. Lena's here as well. Look at these gorgeous clouds. Please invite your followers in, everybody. Plenty of screenshots. Post them up on Twitter. Invite your followers in. You're looking at the Atlantic Ocean right there. Yes, it is. It's like a mackerel sky. So beautiful. Look at that. Look at that, those cloud formations. And back in the distance there is Red Rock Park. So let's take a walk. Let's walk along the beach. We are right now on Lynn Shore Drive in Lynn, Massachusetts, about 35 minutes north of Boston by car or bus. If you take a boat and you go direct, a little less than a half hour. See this seawall right over here? You see that, that metal, uh, the metal casing around the seawall right there? That spot right there is where we usually go to watch uh, storms and the waves usually crash against that metal, uh, just a covering that metal there along the wall and that the waves shoot 20 to 30 feet in the air. And I'm gonna take you up there now so you can actually see it. Beep, 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 a beep, beep, a beep, beep, a beep, beep. Guy can't hear me. <laughs> He's got his headphones in. Yeah, so this seawall right here, you can see how it's reinforced with metal. See the reinforcement, the metal reinforcement down there? So this is the seawall that you've seen Lena and I during storms, we come up here and watch the waves crash against that seawall. Let me show you what it looks like from up above. Do we have a good signal right now? This is what it looks like. All right, let's continue walking. Good signal, great. So invite some followers in. Right now we have four viewers in the house. Everybody invite your followers in. Thank you, Lena, thank you, Tilly. Good morning, everyone. I'm wearing my brand new Bluetooth wireless headset. I love this wireless headset. Hey, Waco, Texas, what's up? What's up, Lena? Good morning. 
Yeah, yeah, that's, I do that every time. As soon as I enter someone's scope, I make it a habit of immediately, hello, Lena. I make it a habit of uh, immediately inviting followers in. That way I don't forget. Hello, Casey girl. What's going on? How are you today? So I guess there's a big uh, Periscope meetup out in LA. A lot of people out in LA meeting up. If you're from LA, you must know about it. Hi, Casey. Hey, J12233445, change your name, get a real name. You gotta get rid of that name. Hiya, hello, hiya. How's work? Works great, I just got out of work. Now, usually I go to bed at this hour, but I'm staying up today because it's just too gorgeous outside. It's too beautiful outside to go to bed right now. So I've decided to stay awake, take a nice one hour walk, get me ready for bed. If you guys don't know me, I work overnights at CBS television in Boston. I'm a television news photojournalist and I'm a filmmaker. And uh, I work the overnights at CBS. Uh, breaking news, you can see all of my breaking news. Uh, retired law enforcement, put in my 25. Awesome. Awesome. So you're retired. Excellent. Um, so yeah, I work overnights. I cover breaking news for CBS television and I usually sleep during the daytime. And uh, I also have a filmmaking company. Uh, I shoot uh, corporate films, promotional films, narrative films, short films, long films, all kinds of films. We have a good time doing that. Now, how are you guys doing today? Let me show you the ocean again. There it is. Yes, uh, we actually did a news story at the uh, Quantico Academy down at uh, Quantico, the FBI building down there. And the FBI gave me that t-shirt. All right, Lena, have a great day at work. Everybody say goodbye to Lena. Follow Lena, everybody. Oh, look at the ducks with their little babies. Look, mother and father duck with little baby ducks. Welcome, Max Payne, first day on Periscope. How are you, Max? Good to see you, Max. All right, Lena, we'll talk to you later. Look at that. Look at that little family of ducklings. Mommy and daddy duck and little baby ducks. If you're just joining me, my name is Rick Boston underscore camera. Follow me here. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram and Snapchat. Same name all through every platform, Boston underscore camera. Look at those clouds, just beautiful. Look at that. The sky is amazing today. Let's go into uh, landscape mode. How's the signal, guys? We still got a good signal here? Mal Mal 3, how are you? Has everybody been following the news about uh, Donald Trump? And the situation at the detention centers? Oh, the sky is beautiful today. And it goes all the way, look at it, it goes all the way across from east to west. Look at that. It's just gorgeous. All the way out to the west where the sun sets at the end of the night. All the way back to the east. Jamie. What's up, Jamie? Thank you for joining. Please invite your followers if you haven't already. 
Yeah, well, he was getting pressured. He was getting a lot of pressure from everyone. He was getting pressure from the media, from the clergy, from religious people, from, from citizens, groups protesting. He had to do something. Look at that. Screenshots, people. Grab those screenshots. I mean, that is an amazing screenshot right there. Post those up on Twitter. Let me go back vertical one more time so you can get a nice portrait with those beautiful clouds. There's even a better shot right there. Screenshot. Thank you, everybody. Great group. Thanks for being here today. You guys are awesome. So, what else is going on? How's everybody doing today? What are we up to today? I'm taking a one hour walk on the beach and then I'll go to bed today. Miss you too, Tilly. Yeah, the clouds are amazing, aren't they? Look at that. The clouds are unbelievable. Oh, you're sick. I'm sorry to hear that. Nobody likes to be sick. Uh, yes, we're going to Fort Lauderdale and Miami in July. The first week in July, we're heading to Fort Lauderdale and Miami Beach for the 4th. We're going to watch the fireworks right on the beach in Fort Lauderdale. And you guys will be there with us. We will periscope it. I'll take you guys with me to Miami. Going down to Miami to look at uh, retirement property. My granddaughter's great, thank you. She's awesome. So yeah, we're looking. I have a realtor all lined up in Miami that I've been working with over the phone and on emails, and she's gonna show me a bunch of properties on Miami, South Beach, Miami. Uh, no, I'm not too young to retire. I've been at CBS for 38 years. I've been working at CBS Television for 38 years. I could have retired a few years ago, but because I need my medical benefits, I'm still hanging on. So, but I'll be retiring soon. Look at this view, oh my God. Look at this view. Some beautiful screenshots there. I try to stay healthy. I try to stay healthy. 24 years, yeah, it's uh, most of the millennials uh, will never ever see that kind of a lifestyle again, where they stay with the same company for a lot of years. I know my daughter, who's 28, she travels, uh, she jumps ship. She moves from company to company. Every couple of years, she quits and gets a new job. Welcome, Bisha. How are you? Welcome to the scope. There's a nice seagull flying. Seagull flying through the clouds. Welcome Dozer, first day on Periscope. Gordy, how are you? Thanks for joining. Hello, Winnipeg. I love it. Love Canada. Our neighbors to the north. Hello, Guru. Hello, Risky. Hello, Chevy. Clouds are amazing. Look at this. If I go to the, uh, if I pan over to the eastern sky, 
check out that eastern sky. Hello Beck 11, hello Russick. Look at that, what amazing clouds today. You should take some screenshots if you haven't already. Please invite your followers in if you haven't and please follow me here. Follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter. It's Boston underscore camera. Follow me on all platforms. Good morning, Guru. How are you, Alexander? Where are you from, Alexander? Alexander, where are you from? Fire and ice, what's happening? How are you? Good morning. Welcome to my show. No problem. Perry55, what's happening? How are you? Thank you for joining the scope today. Kim Kim Kim's. I just finished work. I, I work overnights for CBS. I'm an overnight television news photojournalist. I am a night crawler, is what we call them. A lot of seaweed today on the beach, a lot of algae and seaweed. I love the night shift. I love it. It's the best. I've worked every shift at CBS and I found that the overnight shift is my favorite. All right, Alexander. Good to see you, man. Follow me. Follow me here, Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram, Boston underscore camera. Nah, I'm, I'm energized right now because uh, the weather is so gorgeous this morning. I figured I'd stay awake, take a one hour walk, and then I'll go to bed. Yeah, Tilly, it's awesome. I love it. I love it. I really do. Today's the longest day of the year. Oh, is today uh, the first day of summer, isn't it? Is today the first day of summer? Summer equinox. Awesome. That's great. Where are you from? Do this, baby. Where are you from? Texas. Wow, what part of Texas got 11 inches of rain in one day? That's a lot of rain. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the follow. If you haven't invited your followers in yet, please do. Okay, here we're coming up on some beautiful wild roses. Look at these wild beach roses here. No, we had some rain. We had rain the other day. Oh, look at the bees. The bees are busy. You're visiting family. They're cool. So these are all wild roses. They grow here in the summertime. Very beautiful. Look at that. Let's try to do a screenshot 
with the roses in the foreground and the sky in the background. How's that? Let's try it. Here's a screenshot for you people. There's a screenshot right there. Screenshots. Grab those screenshots, people. There you go. Look at that. Beautiful. Some beautiful screenshots right there. Let's see if I can sneak up on one of these bees. Oh, look at that bee. Look at that bee. That bee is just bathing in the pollen. Look at that. Amazing. Screenshot that sucker. Look at three bees. Screenshot that, guys. Three bees. Three bees, people. Screenshot that. Oh my God, there were just three bees in there. Where did you go? Emily's the one, Mama. There you go, guys. We're gonna walk down the way to the bench and you can put your boot down so you don't have to work. Yeah, greedy. Hey, what's up, Doug? Doug and Allie's in the house. Frameable faces. Follow my buddies. Fellow photographers and great scopers. Yeah, those are greedy bees, aren't they? I hope somebody got those screenshots. Good morning, Scoochie. What's going on? Great. Thank you, Tilly. I knew I could count on you. So these are wild roses that grow here right on the beach. Right on the ocean. All right, let's continue my walk here. Oh, by the way, so this is where I get my um, monarch caterpillars in the fall. At the end of the summer, you can find monarch caterpillars right here. They, they, they love to feed on this milkweed plant. And this is where all the milkweed grows naturally here. So all of the monarch caterpillars feed on this milkweed plant. So in the end of the summertime, you can find those monarch caterpillars right here. And that's what I did last, the end of last summer. I believe it was the end of August, almost into September. And thank you, Kate, how are you? Thanks, Kate, for joining. Follow Sunshine One, everybody. Another great scoper from somewhere north of Boston. So last summer, at the end of the summer, I found a beautiful monarch caterpillar on the bottom of one of these leaves, and I picked the plant as I was uh, walking the beach, and I brought it home, and I raised it through its transformation, through its metamorphosis. And, uh, and then it became a beautiful monarch butterfly, and I let it go. It was beautiful, and that's, uh, I believe it's still available on my replays. That's right. If you guys don't remember, thanks for the super hearts. I so, so appreciate it. If you guys remember last summer, at the end of the summer into September, 
uh, myself and Carol Homko, we were both raising monarch butterflies. And uh, we both let our butterflies go right around the same time. See, these are all milkweed plants right here. If you don't know what a milkweed plant looks like, these are milkweed plants. You see them? And milkweed plants, oh, there's two insects having sex right there. There's two insects having sex. Look at that. They're upside down, and they're having a little fun. Uh-oh. There they are. See, you never know what you find on plants if you look closely. You've got to look closely, guys. Insects. Ha, 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 ha. I love it. Insects. There they are. Look at that. Open insects. <laughs> I wonder which one is the male and which one is the female. Can you guess? I would imagine the male's on top. Let's get really, uh, let's get pornographic now. Let's get is explicit and zoom in on them. <laughs> it is explicit. Look at that. Man, this should be getting, uh, I got insects twerking and, and having sex here. Where's all the viewers? Where'd everybody go? It's an iPhone 7 Plus. It's not the phone. It's the photographer. It's not the phone. All right. Let's move along. Now you guys really know what the milkweed plant looks like. So that's milkweed plant, if you guys didn't know. And they, oh, there's two more. There's two more. Hey, good morning, Ron. How are you? See, these guys are eating. One is eating and one is having sex. Look at that. How about that? Eating while you're getting laid. The female looks like she's eating the leaf while the male is having fun. That's how you roll. <laughs> you see that? Look at that. Great combo. Follow duty, Ron, everybody. Good friend of mine out of New York, a retired New York City police officer. Great scoper, great guy. Uh, he scopes usually at night. Exactly, be proactive, exactly. You got that right. Invite your followers in, everybody, if you haven't already, and thank you for joining the scope this morning. Usually, uh... Usually, I'm sound asleep by now, but uh, I decided to stay up today because the weather is so beautiful. I decided to stay up and walk the beach. Head into the studio later, brother. All right. Say goodbye to frameable faces, Doug and Allie, my good photographer friends. I'm a little tired, but I'm getting invigorated by the sun, 
So, in my walk, I'm doing a one-hour walk, so I'll be super tired by the time I get home and go to sleep. I'm gonna try something new now, because in the summertime, I think it's advantageous to stay awake and take the one-hour beach walk and then go to bed. I think that's gonna be a better idea for the summertime. What do you think, guys? I'm thinking it's much healthier. This is the running path here on the Hunt Beach. We're now on the Hunt Beach. And this is where I used to, uh, back in the day, when I used to rollerblade, I used to rollerblade along this path. A lot of fun. And here's, let's give you a sweeping view of these clouds and the ocean. Look at this. Look at those beautiful clouds, guys. Nah, I don't have any heart problems. My heart's strong. Look at this, guys. Look at these clouds. The clouds are amazing today. Look. All the way across the horizon, these clouds go. All the way to the west. All the way to the east. Look at that. Screenshot that, baby. Screenshot that. Let me put some of these, these sea grasses in the foreground. Like that, there you go. That's a great screenshot right there. Perfect screenshot. Yeah, get that screenshot. All right. Shall we continue? So over there is Nahant. That's the island of Nahant where Lena and I go often to have dinner. There's a great restaurant right there on the waterfront. You can sit outside in the summer. This is such a nice spot right here. You got the, the running path, a walking path. You got the ocean right here. And you've got uh, Nahant right there. Beautiful spot. Actually, we were in Nahant last week uh, in a spot that you usually don't go to because there's no parking. And that was the funny scope I did. You should check out the replay where the police came. The police suddenly showed up and they would ticket you if you park there because non-residents cannot park in Nahant. They don't want tourists in their little oceanfront town. Yes, I did run back. I ran back to the car. You guys should check out that scope. It's on the replay. I think it's called uh, Amazing Sunset from, from Nahant. Something like that. I forget what I titled it, but it's something about... Gorgeous sunset from Nahant, uh, something like that. Rocky coastline, New England coastline. And as soon as I started scoping, the police showed up. And I was, I was telling people in the scope that you can't park there. And uh, as soon as I mentioned that you can't park there, the police showed up. And I started running back to my car. Pretty funny stuff. Yeah, Lena ran too. She didn't know what was going on. Amazing. I'm going to take a walk down by the water here. I think I'm going to take the shirt off. I think it's time to take off the shirt. What do you think? I'm on the beach. Why not take the shirt off? What do you think, guys? Shirt on, shirt off. It's about 75 degrees Fahrenheit right now here. Yeah, it's beautiful out here right now. Look at these views, look at this. Over there is Nahant. Uh, Nahant is right here. This is the island of Nahant right here. And over here is Swampscott. That's Lynn Beach right here where we just came from. This is where I usually do my walks. And over further north is Swampscott Beach. 
Okay, John, definitely. By the way, DM me on Twitter. I wanted to tell you something. I, I was interested in uh, seeing you in a scope, and I wanted to talk to you about it. So uh, send me a DM on Twitter. I'll tell you what it's about. Thank you so much. So look at this. We're going to walk right down to the, the shoreline here. So this is the beach where I grew up as a kid. And then when I was a young parent, I used to come here in the summertime with my father and my stepmother. And then I'd bring my daughters here and we'd sit here on the beach. We used to sit here on the beach and uh, my, my stepmother would bring uh, pepper and egg sandwiches with Romano cheese sprinkled in them. She used to make the pepper and egg Italian style and bring them to the beach and we'd sit here all day eating pepper and egg sandwiches. My dad and I drinking some beer. Oh, it was so much fun. And this beach is perfect for little children because there's never any waves right here. It's always very calm. It's just the way this inlet is. This inlet is very calm and the, it's very shallow even at high tide. So little children can swim here and you don't have to worry about them. See the way it is right now? This is the way the water remains all the time. It's just nice and calm and soft rolling waves. And there's sandbars out here as well. Yeah, great memories, amazing memories. So what's everybody else doing today? Anybody doing anything interesting? Yes, that is Nahant. We are on Nahant Beach right now. See, the causeway that takes you from the mainland, that's Lynn Beach over there. That's the mainland. This causeway right here, all along this causeway, takes you into the island of Nahant. Nahant is an island connected by a small causeway. Well, happy birthday to you. Laying around a lot, yeah, just relaxing. Not me, I like to walk. I like to do my one hour walk as much as possible. Look at that, look at that beach. The water's super clean over here too. This is so clean. There's never any algae or seaweed on the Nahant beach right here. And it's just the way it's designed. It's, it's a natural inlet right here. And it's funny, the seaweed always collects down there. Oh yeah, Tilly? Gonna take him to the vet? You see down there is seaweed. A lot of seaweed and algae grows on the Lynn side, right in that inlet right there. But here, the beach is always crystal clear. There's never any problems with seaweed or debris. I don't know why, but it's just, it's just natural. It's beautiful here. It's clean. Yeah, today would be a great beach day. I wish I could sit here all day, but uh, I got to get to bed soon. So if you haven't invited your followers in, guys, please do. You know, I don't like to repeat that too much, but uh, a lot of people do forget to invite followers. When I go into a scope, the first thing I do is invite followers every time. And that's how the community should work. If you're a community, you want to help out your other scopers and broadcasters. And when you go into their scopes, invite your followers in, take some screenshots, throw them up on Twitter. That's how you make a community strong. Thank you for the super hearts. I do appreciate it. Margaret, what's up? Thank you for joining, Margaret. You seem like you're new to my scopes. I don't recognize your name. Welcome. Follow me here. Follow me on Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram. It's Boston underscore camera. And my name is Rick.
Hi, everybody. Haven't taken my shirt off yet, but I will. Oh, great. Thank you, Margaret. I appreciate that. What a beautiful day out here. Look at this beach. Look at this place. It's awesome. What a perfect day in Boston today. Perfect day. So, what are, what are people thinking about the uh, Trump's last minute decision yesterday in signing that order? If you've been following the situation with the detention camps and separating children from their parents at the border from uh, Mexico, anybody been watching the news? Anybody have anything to say about it? Pretty important topic. I've been tweeting a lot about it lately. I've been seeing a lot of great stuff about it. Of course it was pretty cruel. It's ungodly. I just can't believe that his wife, or maybe his wife did pressure him. Maybe Melania pressured him into signing that. She might have said to him, look, Donald, you got to, Maybe she calls him the Donald. Look, the Donald. You got to do something. It's just a, it's just unbelievable. Especially once they release the, the the tapes of the crying children. Oh my God. Once I heard those kids crying, calling out their parents' names, I could never. I could never see my children being taken away from me. It's just, how could you live like that? And then did you see the uh, tweet by Peter Fonda, the actor Peter Fonda, Jane Fonda's brother? He tweeted out that someone should rip Melania's boy away from her and send him to a cage, a detention center in a cage. Did you see that? And then he had to apologize. I, I would think maybe his agent or somebody made him apologize. Anybody see that tweet or hear that in the news? Actor Peter Fonda. Kia Ora. Oh, is that Louise? Hello, Louise. How are you? Follow Louise Poppy, everybody. Great scoper from New Zealand, but she's hardly ever in New Zealand. Here's a woman who travels around the world all the time. I don't know how she does it, but she's always traveling. She's always on the road. No, we didn't see here in England. Yeah, the news is just terrible. It's just, it's just, uh, uh, I just can't believe that this is happening. So, Hopefully, we'll get these children back to their parents. However, a lot of these children have already been moved to different places around the United States. So some of these children that have already been separated uh, from their parents may never see their parents again. It's, uh, it's very unfortunate. I'm hoping that's not the case, but it might be the ones that have already been separated. The queen stepped in. It's it's just, yeah, it's so inhumane. It's terrible. Terrible. Let me show you the ocean again, guys. Some seagulls here playing in the ocean in the morning. Look at the seagulls here. How's the picture and sound, everybody? Good? And look at these clouds. Look at these morning clouds. Yeah, he is heartless. I'm not a big Trump fan. And I don't usually get into politics in my scopes, but uh, I got to tell you, this is this is the, the straw that broke the camel's back, in my opinion. Excellent. Perfect audio, perfect video. I'm using my new Bluetooth uh, headsets. They're really nice. See, these are Bluetooth headsets. These are awesome. Good news from New Zealand. What's the good news from New Zealand? I might have missed uh, the last part of that, Louise. 
unless you didn't say it yet, what's the good news? Tell me, I'm waiting. The man will go down in history as the worst president ever. Yeah, well, just before him, George Bush, George W. was the worst president. Now we have one even worse than him. Wait, a new baby? Who's got a new baby? Who has a baby girl? Certainly not you, Louise. One of your sons? One of your sons has a baby? That would be awesome. I think I remember you saying that uh, one of your children was pregnant or maybe uh, your son's wife was pregnant. What time is it? It is, I don't know. You can, you can t uh, tap on those three dots on the bottom right corner of your screen and you can go to broadcast details. It'll show you the local time here. Let me see, I'm gonna do it right now. Broadcast details, time. And I can't read it because it's too sunny here. It's too bright and sunny, so I can't read what time it is. And I don't have a watch on, so you'll have to read it. If you're indoors, click on the three dots down on the bottom right. Follow me there while you're at it, if you don't follow me already. And you can check the map location and the time. Oh, it's New Zealand's Prime Minister, I see. The Australian president who had a baby. Gotcha, gotcha. 9.07 in Boston, perfect time for me to turn around and head back to my car so I can go to sleep. I'm gonna head back in the opposite direction now, guys. All right, I'm gonna take off my shirt here for a minute. So let me put you guys down for a sec while I take my shirt off and enjoy the sunshine. Hold on. There we go. Got the shirt off. The shirt is off. It's officially summer. I got the shirt off at the beach. Good morning, Milwaukee. How are you? Opening bobs, exactly. We are opening bobs. Some of you guys remember when I used to scope from the beach when I had my uh, back surgery a couple of years ago. I used to walk the beach after I had my back surgery every day while I was out of work. It was a lot of fun. Why, why you have to sleep? What do you mean why I have to sleep? Of course everybody has to sleep. Hello Kansas City. I sleep during the day. I work all night. I work uh, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. in the morning. Hey, first day of summer and it's your birthday. Oh yeah, Margaret, happy birthday. Everybody say hello and happy birthday to Margaret. Say happy birthday. It is a gorgeous day today. Look at those clouds over my head. Look at that. Look at those gorgeous clouds up there. Uh, it depends what time I go to bed. I usually try to get six or seven hours of sleep every day. So usually I go to bed by 8.30, 9 a.m. when I don't walk the beach. Uh, and then I'm up by four in the afternoon. Today I'm, I'm staying up a little bit later because it's just such a beautiful day and I wanted to get in my morning walk. So I'll probably go to bed by 10.30, 11. I'll get up by 5 or 6 in the afternoon and I'll have breakfast. Breakfast in the afternoon. That's the way we do it. Hard to see the comments now. By the way, if you haven't invited, please invite. Invite your followers in, everybody. Look at this. I love this beach. Beautiful soft sand. 
Thank you, Louise Poppy, for the super hearts. You're the best. Uh, Louise and I met up uh, in Japan. We met up at uh, Shiboya Crossing, which is the famous crossing in Tokyo. People must know about it. I remember when I first saw Louise, I was standing up on a statue at Shiboya Crossing in Tokyo doing time-lapse photography. And uh, there's Louise Poppy, larger than life. And we had dinner together that night with uh, Harumi from Tokyo. And uh, Harumi's, uh, no, Harumi's husband did not go with us that night. Uh, Louise was there with her good friend from New Zealand. I do love my work, yes. Yeah, we had a lot of fun, Louise. So Louise is a great scoper. Follow Louise Poppy, everybody. Uh, yeah, I do love my work. And I, when I retire from CBS, I won't stop my filmmaking career. I actually have my own company. I have a corporation, a small corporation. And uh, I do work. Your old home, huh? Base Diva. Uh, where is Harumi? She's in Tokyo. Harumi's in Tokyo. Mariana, thank you for saying that. You know, I, I, I've heard the name calling on some other person's scope, calling everybody else phonies. Meanwhile, he's the biggest phony out there. I'm not going to mention names. Oh, yeah, she, I think she's doing Twitch now, Louise. I think Harumi has switched over to Twitch. I think she's doing more broadcasting on Twitch because she's, uh, she's really young and she's into uh, gaming and stuff. So I think she's doing more Twitch. That's why. It's too bad. I miss her on Periscope. She's one of the cutest little people I've ever met. She's just so tiny and cute and fun. Her personality is awesome. That's correct, Tilly. Yes, I will get retirement benefits and I will still work under my corporation as a filmmaker. Hey, Jim's here. Welcome, Jim. Follow Jim. Jim, throw up some emojis for us, please. She is like a little bird. She's tiny. I'm doing great, Jim. Jim, throw up some emojis so people can follow you here. Jim's a great scoper. He does, uh, I think, once or twice a week. He does uh, a great scope at night. Dig some clams. Yeah, I don't know if I'd eat the clams from here. I would have to go more north, like Maine. I think in Maine you'd get much cleaner, cleaner clams from the ocean. Uh, although this is a very clean beach. It's a very clean beach, so I would imagine the clams aren't that bad here. I'm not a big uh, shellfish guy. I like scallops, but um, I'm not a big clam guy. I will eat oysters, but uh, raw clams, I don't know. I do like fried clams, though. Love fried clams with tartar sauce, or as we say in Boston, tata, tata sauce, T-A-T-A. -T -A. Tada, or T-A-D-A, -A, Tada sauce. That's how we say it in Boston. Yeah, I, I, I tend to, as Anthony Bourdain wrote in his book, Kitchen Confidential, a quote from Anthony Bourdain, rest in peace, Anthony. When I read his book and he talked about eating mussels or shellfish from restaurants where you do not know the chef personally, he said, be very careful because the way they store their shellfish, their shellfish actually sit in their own pee and poop. 
and they just store them like that. They don't keep them clean. Some restaurants do, but it's hard to tell which ones do and which ones don't. Yeah, that's why I, I very rarely eat mussels unless it's a really, really expensive, well-known restaurant where the chef is, you know, his, his reputation depends on it. You're not going to get sick at a restaurant like that. Hello, Cape Town, Cape Town, South Africa, welcome. Yeah, it's true, it is true. And, you know, I remember one time I was down visiting my family in Fort Lauderdale on the beach, and uh, I, had, I had a mussel dinner with my sister on the beach right before I was catching a flight back to Boston. We had mussels and pasta. I believe it was, you know, linguine with mussels or something like that. And uh, I ate the mussels and the pasta, tasted delicious. Of course, while I was at the airport waiting for my flight to go home, I suddenly got violently ill. And the whole time on the plane heading home, I was in the toilet on the plane. Not a fun trip. So uh, that's what, ever since that happened to me, I've been very careful about eating mussels, clams. Like I said, oysters I'll eat from a reputable restaurant. Uh, but mussels and clams, eh, I don't know. Not the ones that are sitting in their own poop. It's hard to tell how they store them, you know? Well, especially, especially clams. Mussels and clams, they're dirty, they're bottom feeders, and uh, like I said, you have to really know the restaurant in order to trust it enough to eat those. Some people don't care, some people have a tough stomach, like Dave in Osaka. Dave will eat anything. I've seen Dave eat gigantic raw clams that looked like, God, they looked like aliens from another planet. They looked like baby aliens from the movie. And he ate those suckers raw. I couldn't do that. I will say hello to Lena. Oh, is Lena here again? Is Lena back in the scope? Yeah, Dave will eat anything. And I, I won't, I'm not like that. My stomach is, uh, it's very, uh, I get upset very easily. My stomach gets upset very easily. So I got to be careful about that. Mystery meat noodle soup. I saw that. Yes, I saw that scope last night. That's nothing, though, compared to the stuff he usually eats. Dave, he's, at, he's eating spiders and ugh, grubs with white pus coming out of them when he bites into it. Eh, gross, man. I could never do that. All right, Tilly, have a great day. Thank you for joining Thank you for all the hearts. Mystery meat soup, yeah. Dave had it on his scope, watch the replay. It actually says mystery meat on the label. It's a, it's a ramen noodle that comes in a, in a little plastic cup and you heat it up, you put some boiling water in there. Thank you, thank you so much. I hope somebody got those uh, flowers with the three bees in them. There were three bees inside of three flower pots, uh, three flower pods, I should say. Oh yeah, Melly, Melly's here. Hey, Melly. Melly got featured recently, awesome. Great to have you in the scope, Melly. Good to see you. Let's take a look at the ocean again. Let me give you a pan of the ocean right here. Hello, Lena's back again. Lena, you're gonna get in trouble. You're gonna get in trouble, Lena. You're supposed to be working. Lena's supposed to be at work right now. I know, that's awesome. Melly did a great job. It is low tide, here we go. I'm gonna give you the 360, okay? Here's the 360, guys. Okay, straight ahead up there is, that's Linshore Drive where I walk all the time. And if you go north, this way is Swampscott Beach. And then if you continue north is Marblehead. There's Marblehead up there where I raised my children in that town. 
And then here is Simon Iggy across the pond. Hello, Simon. Say hello to Simon over there in the UK, straight across the pond right there. That's the Atlantic Ocean. And then over here, we're looking at the island of Nahant, Massachusetts, where Lena and I go for dinner quite often. There's a great restaurant called The Tides right there at the end of this beach. That's the beginning of the island of Nahant. And if you continue to go slowly to the right, this is the causeway right here where cars can go across to the island of Nahant. And it also has a beautiful running walking path up there I'll show you in a minute. And if you continue this way, actually I'm going to go up there and I'll show you Boston before we continue the 360. Boston, you can see the skyline right across the, the bay right here. So behind me is the Atlantic Ocean. That's the Atlantic Ocean. And on this side is the bay or Lynn Harbor. And let me show you the city skyline. You can see Boston here in the distance. It's only a half, about a half hour away by car, unless you're in traffic. If you're in traffic, it's an hour. All right, so here's the city of Boston in the distance. Let me give you the skyline shot. I'll zoom in. And there it is. That's Boston in the distance. And that's only about 13 miles from here. If you were to fly straight over there as the crow flies, it would only take you about 10 minutes. But if you're uh, driving, if you're driving over there, it's going to take you at least a half hour in traffic, 45 minutes. Thank you for the super hearts, Melly. You're awesome. So that's the city of Boston right over there in the distance. That's the skyline. And this is Lynn Harbor over here. That's where my hairdresser is, my salon where I get my hair cut, right in that brick building right there where all the boats are. See where all those boats are over there in Lynn Harbor? That's where my uh, hairstylist is, right there on the waterfront. I go to see her once in a while. And this coming 360 is the path, the walking, running path that follows all along Nahant Beach, all the way to the end of Nahant, way down there, and all the way back to Lynn Beach, right over here. Lovely, lovely walking path. Yeah, it's a great path to walk and run. I used to, uh, I used to have rollerblades back in the day, and I used to use my rollerblades out here. It was awesome. When this was brand new, this was all fresh asphalt, and it was so smooth. It was beautiful for using a. Uh, Rollerblades was awesome. But I don't rollerblade anymore. It's kind of got out of fashion. I used to wear those black boner pants. We used to call them the boner pants. Remember those black, tight black pants that uh, the guys used to wear rollerblading? We called them boner pants. <laughs> the 90s, exactly. The tight black boner pants, bicycle shorts, they were known as rollerblading shorts. Yeah, guilty. <laughs> I know, we all used to wear them, right? Hey, it was in fashion at the time, right? Anything that's in fashion. Now, how about if you go back to the 80s? If you go back to the 80s, how about those men's... Uh, those men's shorts in the 80s, they were tiny, tiny, tiny little mini shorts in the 80s. Yeah, the beach is close to me, Melly. I live about five minutes away from here. Five minutes away. I can get in my car and be here in five minutes. 
nut huggers, yes. In the 80s, they were even tighter and shorter. That was so funny. You can definitely see, when you see guys wearing those tiny, tiny shorts in the 80s, you know it was the 80s. Yeah, you, I, it's funny. I go back and, and look at some videos of uh, home movies of my kids when my kids were babies in the 80s. And uh, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed by seeing pictures of myself back then. But back then, you know, we didn't know any better. That was the style. Not a great look, no. And then if you go back to the 70s, which some of you can remember the 70s. Men wore cut off uh, jeans, or we called them dungarees back then. They were called dungarees, not jeans. And that was the, uh, the look in the 70s, was cut off jeans. Anybody remember that? <laughs> Jorts, yeah. Yeah, and the more tattered and ripped they were, the cooler they were, remember? They were so much cooler if they were ripped. Remember that? Those were fun times. I'd like to see if some guy has the balls to wear those today. I don't think I've seen any guys today in this day and age wearing cut off jeans. I see women wear them, but I never see guys wear them anymore, right? Anybody see them? <laughs> Dad wore Speedos. You know what? I never wore a Speedo. I was not a Speedo guy. I remember when I went to Rio de Janeiro on vacation in the 80s. And every guy on the beach in Rio de Janeiro at Copacabana Beach was in a tiny, tiny Speedo. And I'm like, God, these guys have a lot of balls, literally a lot of balls, because you could see their balls tucked into that little tiny bathing suit. Fashion. And you know what? And those guys in, in Rio, they don't care if they weigh 300 pounds. They don't care if they got a giant belly sticking out in the front. They still wear Speedos. Bob Weir. <laughs> they still wear Speedos, even with a big belly hanging over the Speedo. I just think it's funny. Do you guys remember that commercial uh, about two or three years ago? You'd rather go to a nudist beach. Do you remember two or three years ago, there was a commercial on TV for some alcohol? It was for a hard liquor. It might have been Johnny Walker. Was it Johnny Walker? When the guy's walking on the beach and he's got on a tiny, tiny little skimpy Speedo and he's got a big belly hanging over and he's walking on the beach and he's looking at all the women and then the dog starts following him on the beach. Anybody remember that commercial? Yeah, of course, Europe and Asia, of course. Anybody remember that commercial? I do. I think it was for Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker Black or Johnny Walker Red. Yeah, Melly remembers it. That was a great commercial, right? That was an awesome, so funny, such a funny commercial. And the dog leaves, leaves uh, its owners and starts following the guy around the beach. That was so funny, hysterical, great spot. I believe that commercial made its debut during one of the Super Bowls, if I'm not mistaken. I think that was one of the Super Bowl commercials. Was it not? Anybody help me out here on that one? I think it was a Super Bowl commercial. Hi from China. That's okay if you don't know the commercial. God help you. <laughs> I think it was. I really do think it was a Super Bowl spot. It was really original. Very original. The music was great. All it was was him walking the beach very boldly with his big belly hanging out. And he had on Italian shoes. That was the thing that made it interesting. 
He was walking on the beach with Italian shoes on, with a skimpy Speedo and his big belly hanging over that. And it was just him walking to music. Just a funny spot. It must be the shoes, yes. It was amazing. All right, here's the beach again. Let me show you the beach. Continue walking back to my car so I can go home and go to sleep. This is Lynn Beach right here. We just came from Nahant. Facing this direction is Nahant Beach. And now we're going back to Lynn Beach where I will pick up my car. Actually, my car is at Swampscott Beach. So we have to walk the entire length of Lynn Beach and then Swampscott. I'm gonna go down to the, to the water down here, walk along this wall. I love this wall. It's a great wall right here. Okay, thank you. Hello. Who was that? Ernie, what's up, Ernie? How are you, my friend? It's hard to see the names because it's so bright and sunny out here. You can't really see the names. So I'm going to walk along this wall. Actually, I'm going to walk along the water. I'll walk along the water until I have to climb the wall. Then we'll get up on the wall and walk the wall. So the tide usually comes up to right here where these rocks are and slams up against this wall right here. And uh, if you followed my scopes during storms. All right, thank you very much. Follow JS Scope, everybody. Nice guy, does great scopes. Uh, tell us when you scope again, which nights do you scope? Jim, what nights do you scope? Tell, uh, tell the viewers here what nights you scope so they can follow you. Yes, I'm on Lynn Shore Drive right now. I just came from Nahant Beach. Nahant Beach is down this way. I've walked all the way from Swampscott all the way to Nahant. Now I'm walking back again to Swampscott. Wednesday and Thursday at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. So follow this man right here. With some fun scopes. He does trivia. He does music. He does all kinds of fun stuff. You have family in Lynn, Lynn Lynn, City of Sin. You never go out the way you came in. Oh, look at this seagull on top of the rock over here. Check this out. This might be a nice screenshot. That's a screenshot right there, guy. There you go. Screenshot that one. Let's continue. Let's continue. Yes, I broadcasted from Boston Harbor last week. Go back and watch my replay. I took the ferry from Salem, Mass, where I live. I took the Boston Ferry, the Salem-Boston Ferry, and went into the Boston Harbor and walked all around the Boston waterfront. Hey, Rita from Sweden, how are you? Thanks for joining everybody. It's hard to see the names right now, but I see people coming into the scope. Thanks so much for joining, I do appreciate it. All right, we're gonna climb up on this wall over here and uh, walk the wall if I can get up there. I hope I can get up there. I haven't checked, Melly. I'm scoping right now. I haven't been able to check. I'm walking, so uh, I'll check them later. Thank you so much for sending them. No, I can't get up on this wall here. I gotta go around. Here's a little spot here where you could see some uh, some little live creatures in the tidal pools. 
Oh, weeks ago. Yes, I think I did. What what pictures are you referring to that you sent me? All right. Nice meeting you too. Go Celts, go Pats, go Bruins, go Sox. Midsummer in Sweden right now. All right, Rita. Thank you for so much for joining the scope. Oh, yes, yes, I got those. Thanks so much. I did get those. Thank you, Melly. So right now you're looking at Red Rock Park coming up here. This is Lynn Shore Drive. Some beautiful homes on the waterfront here. All these homes look right at the Atlantic Ocean. Everybody who's joining, thanks so much for coming in. Like I said, it's getting really dark now. The screen is getting dark because the bright sunlight is hitting the screen, which I don't really understand why that happens on an iPhone. If it gets brighter outside, shouldn't the screen get brighter too so you could see it? I don't understand why the screen gets really dark when the sun gets really bright. It's it's counter it's it's counterintuitive and counterproductive. It it makes it so you can't see the screen in the sunlight. It doesn't make any sense at all. It should actually get brighter as the sun gets brighter. And as it gets darker, the screen should also get darker. Yeah. Yeah, especially on Periscope. If you're periscoping and the sun is out, it's almost impossible to see the comments unless you really stop and look closely. Look at that big rock right there. In the distance is Nahant, the island of Nahant across the water there. Look at that giant rock with all the bird crap on top of it. Seagull crap on that one, look. Yeah, exactly. Put a man on the moon, but you can't see a phone screen in the sun. Exactly. There's some nice bird poop there. Seagulls, most likely. That's a great spot for the seagulls to sit. Oh, the sky was amazing earlier in the scope. When you watch the replay, go back and look at the sky at the beginning of this replay. And also, go on my IG page, my Instagram page and you will see a gorgeous sunrise this morning. I actually took two pictures this morning of the sky and the sunrise from Boston. All right, Melly, thanks for joining. Follow Melly, everybody. Great scope, recently featured on Periscope. She's a doll, she's a lovely person. Follow Melly. Throw up some emojis, Melly, before you leave. Yeah, the sky, make sure you do follow me on Instagram. It's Boston underscore camera on Instagram. And you'll see the photos I posted this morning. The sky was amazing. Also at the beginning of the scope, right at the beginning of the scope, the sky was just full of gorgeous puffy little clouds. And here's the spot right here where I take you when there's a bad storm. Do you see those metal See down below here, there's metal reinforcement on this cement wall. This is where the waves crash 20 to 30 feet in the air when there's a storm. Let me take you up here. I always scope from here when there's a bad storm. And I'm telling you, these waves, there's another replay you can watch where I was up here taking, a, I was doing a periscope and these waves were coming over this railing about 20 to 30 feet in the air from hitting this wall right here. You see this wall down below? It's got metal, metal reinforcement. It's 
so during the storms you could never stand right here because you you get drenched with salt water so usually we stand back here I usually like to stand right here right at the edge of this staircase right here and man this is where you see the waves coming over this this little area right here they just come up 20 to 30 feet high in the air it's unbelievable and uh, you can go back and watch one of my replays recently when we had our last storm here oh I got drenched the scope actually ended I got so wet that the phone shut off unbelievable All right, people, I'm gonna step up on the wall now. I'm walking on the wall. I'm on the wall right now. And I'm gonna go down there and walk on that wall down below as soon as I get to the staircase. No, I'm not going to jump. I'm not going to jump. Hello, Reese. Reese, what's happening? How are you? Thanks for coming in. If you haven't invited your followers in, please do. Invite your followers, share it out on Twitter, and share it out on Periscope to your followers. We're taking a nice morning walk in the sun. Boston, north of Boston right here. This is the North Shore. Thank you, everybody. There you go. Thanks for sharing. So I'm going to go down that staircase right there. Right now I'm on the edge of this wall. right on the edge of that wall walking and I am going to hit that staircase and go down walk on the lower wall down there you'll see it some of you people might have a little vertigo from this you're probably a little worried that I'll fall right but I won't there we go here's the stairs There we go. Now we're down by the water. It is low tide right now. It's beautiful here though, nice and calm. Look how gorgeous this is. We are now at Red Rock Park in Lynn. Right up above this wall is a beautiful park with green grass summer concerts up here it's really a nice spot and we're not far from boston there's the city right there in the distance let me zoom in on it you can see the city skyline down there see it there it is there's the boston skyline right there so we're not that far from the city i'm up on the north shore it's about a half an hour drive when there's no traffic up here and that's it and we are here on Lynn Shore Drive Lynn Beach we just finished walking on the hot beach no no the New England waters are they don't get warm until the end of August it's almost unbearable swimming in this water in the summertime that's the one bad thing about New England the water is pretty it's gorgeous but it's just brutally cold, brutally cold. If you're a guy and you're trying to swim in here, your testicles are gonna be up inside, inside your stomach. I remember when I was a little kid and I used to go swimming here. When you're a kid, it doesn't matter, nobody cares. Toronto, yes, of course. But like when you're a child, you see kids in the water all the time here in New England, they don't give a shit. They'll swim in freezing water. They don't care. Until their lips are blue, until they're shaking like a leaf. Iris, what's up, Iris Blue? How are you? Thanks for joining. But, uh, yeah, adults, yeah, it's very difficult to swim in this water. Until you hit, like, uh, when you hit the end of August, beginning of September, when the summer is just about over, 
when the summer is just about over, that's when the water warms up. You know? It's not warm this time of year. Look at this beautiful algae here. This is gorgeous. I'd like to be underwater there with a scuba tank on. Hey, there's the fishermen up above. Guys fishing right up above me, see? Look, they're fishing. He's gonna cast out right now. They're using saltwater worms. Right above my head, they're fishing. There he goes, he just cast it out there. I better get out of their way because I don't want to get a hook in the head. Raining in New York City. Really? It's raining in New York City? That's unbelievable. I would think you got the same weather as us here. Here's a good, uh, here's a, here's a really nice screenshot, guys. Get this screenshot. There's a good screenshot of a guy, a lone fisherman, all by himself there. Wow. Screenshots, everybody. Post those screenshots up on Twitter. See the fisherman out there all by himself? Let's try one going uh, landscape, see what we get. There you go, there's a nice screenshot right there. Beautiful screenshot right there. Grab that screenshot, everybody. Post it up on Twitter. All right, all right. I guess nobody wanted to do it. It's okay. I'm not forcing you to take screenshots. Maybe people will take them in the replay. Okay, we'll see you later. Thank you for joining. Say goodbye to Rita from Sweden, everybody. Follow me. If you're not following me, Rita, make sure you follow me. And follow me on Instagram and Snapchat and Twitter. It's all the same name, Boston underscore camera. Here's another shot of the, here's another shot of the guy here. Let's, let's get one more screenshot of this lone fisherman. Get that screenshot and post it up guys on Twitter. Okay, I guess nobody's doing it. All right, let's go up here. I'll show you Red Rock Park. So this is Red Rock Park right here. Gorgeous park, beautiful green grass. He's fishing, he's out there fishing all by himself. This is where people come with their dogs. They play Frisbee here. There are concerts here in the summertime at sunset, really beautiful place to come. And what makes it great is it's right on the ocean. It's right on the Atlantic Ocean. Hey Ruby, thank you for joining Ruby. This is uh, Lynn Beach right here. You're now looking at Lynn Beach. We just walked from uh, Swampscott Beach down to Lynn Beach all the way down to Nahant Beach and now we're walking back From Lynn Beach to Swampscott again. It's about an hour and a half walk We're having a nice walk enjoying the morning Sun Lincolnshire Lincolnshire. That's a nice part of the UK, huh? Well, it's right over my shoulder. The UK is right out there behind me. Right out there. That's the Atlantic Ocean. So, hello to the UK. Right behind me, right there. We're just a hop, skip, and a jump across the pond. That's right. All right. 
So now we're on Lynn Beach. Let me show you. Another nice beach here. Nope, not too far. There's some kids down there doing something. Let's see what they're doing. I'll ask them what they're doing. Hey, you guys finding anything down there? You finding anything down there? No? No clams, no, no mussels? All right, I guess not. What a beautiful day to walk the beach. And this, this is Linshore Drive right here. This is a state road all along this roadway. And at the end of this beach, our governor lives here. Exactly, the annual Shirtlift Speech Walk. It has just started today. Today's the first day of the annual Shirtlift Speech Walk. It's the first day of summer, everybody, the longest day of the year. And I'm walking back down to the waterfront now, back down the ramp to the beach. I walk right along the water. By the way, how's the picture and sound? Is it good? That's correct. Today is summer equinox, the longest day of the year. That's correct. Summertime, I can officially take off my shirt. I can officially walk the beach with no shirt on and feel okay about it. Nobody's gonna make fun because it's summertime and I'm on the beach. Why shouldn't I walk shirtless? It's gorgeous weather and I'm getting a suntan. I'm getting some nice sun. Sweating a little bit. It's gorgeous out here. Look at this. Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Clean water, salt water. Thanks for coming in, everybody. I do appreciate you staying with me this long. I know some people come in and out of the scope. They don't stay forever, but those of you who have followed me through since the beginning, I do appreciate it. No, I decided I'm gonna try something new for the summertime. I'm gonna try walking in the morning, right after work on my way home and then go to bed so I can enjoy some of the weather and not feel depressed. Hello England, hello England, there you are right across the pond. We are here at the Atlantic Ocean looking east. There's the UK right over there. How are you this morning? So yeah, from now, Cookie's in the house. Hello Cookie, nice to see you. Thanks for joining Cookie. Yes, I do see you. <laughs> Hello, Cookie. So yeah, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to stay up and walk the beach when it's warm and it's a nice day. If it's raining, I probably won't do it. But on a nice sunny day like this, I get FOMA, fear of missing out. When I go to bed at 8, 9 o'clock in the morning on a beautiful day as I shut my bedroom shades, Exactly. I wake up at uh, 4 or 5 in the afternoon. So I miss out all this beautiful weather and it depresses me when I'm heading to bed on a day like this at 9 in the morning and I know that I'm going to miss the entire day. So I think I'm going to try this new experiment. I'm going to stay up. Uh, I, I pass this beach on my way home in the morning, every morning. 
So I'm going to just stop here, take an hour walk on the beach, then go home and go to bed. What's an hour later, you know? It's not a big difference. No, it's too cold. The water's way too cold. I can't go swimming in this. My uh, goglionis, as the Italians say, or my testicles, would be all the way up into my thyroid if I went in this water. That's how high up my testicles would shoot inside my body to try to get some warmer temperature. Yeah, the fresh air is awesome though. It's gorgeous. It's sunny. It's warm. I'm smelling the salt air. I'm a Canon guy. I also have Sony cameras. I have a Sony and I have uh, a couple of Canons. I have a C300 cinema camera, which is my main cinema camera that I own. That's made by Canon. I have all Canon glass. Plus I have a Sony, a newer Sony camera. It is, and I have all Canon glass. I've invested in Canon glass. So I'm not about to sell all that. So I'm gonna stick with Canon for my cinema work. And I also have a Sony camera and that has a, a zoom lens, a 24 to 600 millimeter. And it shoots 240 frames per second slow motion. So I use that camera for my slow motion work. Lena is great. By the way, if you wanna see my latest slow motion work that I shot with my Sony camera, Go to my Twitter page, Boston underscore camera, and look for the pinned tweet. The pinned tweet on Boston underscore camera's Twitter page shows a beautiful short film that I just did in Kyoto, Japan. And Lena is the model. She's wearing a kimono, and she walks all around Kyoto during the height of the Cherry Blossom Festival. It is a gorgeous film, and it's all in super slow motion. So check out my Twitter page, follow me here, follow me on Twitter. Snapchat is where I do breaking news uh, in the middle of the night. I work as a overnight night crawler, television news photojournalist for CBS. And on the overnights, I shoot breaking news and I post all my breaking news up on Snapchat. Since my employer will not allow me to periscope live broadcasts, while I'm working anymore. They, would, they don't want me broadcasting while I'm on the job. So if you want to see my breaking news stuff, go to my Snapchat, Boston underscore camera. If you want to see my traveling photos, go to my Instagram page, Boston underscore camera. And if you want to see just my daily tweets and my pinned tweet about the Kyoto slow motion trip starring Lena, my girlfriend, dressed in a kimono, Go to my Twitter page, look for the, the pinned tweet, and leave a comment. Leave a comment there. I need to collect seashells. I got enough seashells. I've lived on the ocean my entire life. So that's the information. If you want to see a really beautiful slow motion video, short film that I just did, it's about seven minutes long, not too long just the right amount of time. Check that out. It's pinned to the top of my Twitter page. It's called Kyoto in slow motion. And it stars my girlfriend, Lena, walking around Kyoto in a kimono at the height of the Sakura. Sakura meaning the Cherry Blossom Festival. Metal detector, nah. I don't need a metal detector. Oh, look at this. This is the shell of a little a little uh, crab. Look at that. He's been picked clean by a seagull, I would imagine. See that? No more meat on that little clam. Uh, that little crab. He's been picked clean. Not even any legs left. Captain, Captain, what's happening? Good morning, my friend. Thank you for joining. Thanks for coming into the scope. All right, let's continue. We're almost back to my car now. Almost at the end of the scope. This is the Lynn Shore Drive Reservation. 
and here's some history. The arts thrive. Imagine Massachusetts in the 1800s when society believed that education and the arts build strong moral character. Larger cities and towns in the state offered free art classes and thriving industries providing funding for the art patrons. Many artists came to paint at the shore, including a group of seven local artists who came to be known as the Lynn Beach Painters. These local painters used a colorful style similar to that of French Impressionists. They depicted coastal scenes, including local fishermen, their equipment and surroundings, which contrasted with the industrial development inland. Why not create your own work of art here as you enjoy the ocean views, the salty smells, and the sounds of the waves? And here are some of those images that were painted here. This one's from 1925, Oil on Canvas by Edward Page. A coastal scene, an abandoned dory, 1925. And here's another one by Edward Page. And this is another coastal scene, hauling lobster traps with a horse and buggy. That's 1927. And here's one more by Edward Burrell Jr. This one is Fisherman's Beach in Swampscott, just up the road. And that has no date. That's also probably from the 1920s. Beautiful. Here's the three of them. Three oils on canvas from the 1920s right here at this beach. All right, let's continue. Now we're entering Swampscott right now. So we've walked from Swampscott through Lynn Beach right here all the way to Nahant, which is all the way down there and back again to Swampscott, which we are entering right now. Here's entering Swampscott. Here's the sign. Let me give you a screenshot of this if you want it. I'll put the beach in the background. There it is, entering Swampscott. And that is where our governor lives, right up the street. Governor Baker lives about a block from here. I pass his house every morning on my way home from work. You guys who know my scopes, who see me scope from my car as I drive home. I pass the state police officer on detail who sits in front of his mansion right up the street here. The governor lives. And here we go. And that's the end of the tour, ladies and gentlemen. Let me give you a nice screenshot of the beach. That's how we'll end the scope here in Swampscott. Once again, thanks everybody for joining. If you want to see the replay and see some amazing early morning clouds here, go back and watch the replay for the beginning of the scope. The cloud formations are amazing this morning. They were just tremendous. Also on my Instagram, you can see, I took a couple of beautiful pictures this morning of the clouds in Boston. Bye-bye, Cookie. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thanks for all the hearts, the super hearts, and just for your support in general. I've been here on Periscope for many, many, uh, well, three years now. I was one of the original Periscopers. My first scope was dropping eggs into a frying pan. I called it fried eggs. That was my first scope that I ever did. And here we are. Still with Periscope going strong. All right, I will. Thank you very much. Take care, everybody. Have a great afternoon while I'm asleep. I'm going to bed now. Ciao. Thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye.